Hi folks, I'm Silmar UK and welcome back to my Let's Play video series on Shadowrun Returns. Let's just get back into the game. So, it continues. So last time we completed our run against Telestrian HQ um, and we got the sample of the Aegis weapon, which is what we're going to need to use against the bug spirits at the Universal Brotherhood Chapter House. But we got picked up on our way out and we have now been invited, in quotes, to go speak to James Telestrian III. So, here we are. Look, Klusky smokes. Want some advice, Moran? Of course you don't. You're a shadow run, you live by your own rules, don't you? I should you keep your smart ass remarks to yourself this time, human. Mr. Telestrian isn't some street meat you can impress or intimidate. He's the brains behind the throne of Tia Tangier, one of the richest men in Seattle. Should I be impressed? This smoke gets even bigger. No, you go ahead in there and keep talking trash. That should work out fine for you, Dracula Brains. you got no money and you got no power, so what do you got? Oh no. <laughs> You're dumber than I thought. Enjoy your chat. I'll dispose of your body later. Yeah, I don't like you, McCluskey. The fussy elf with the air of a Victorian butler studies you before he speaks. He doesn't like what he sees. Mr. Telestrian is expecting you. You will find him in his office. This is an extraordinary estate. May I look around before I see him? You may wait here for a few moments to gather yourself before you enter Mr. Telestrian's office. Some people find they need time to prepare themselves before meeting an elf of his stature. However, the upstairs is off limit to you and the library is occupied at the moment. Do not tarry though, Mr. Telestrian is not one to be kept waiting long. And we still got our combat join. Hey hey. Algeron. There is a twinkle in Algeron's eye that wasn't there when you spoke of the Seamstress Union. It's good to see you again. There is much to do. Okay, my magical friend. Explain yourself. No, I do not explain. I provide a service. Seek me out after you've spoken to James Telestrian. Perhaps I can be of service again. Well, that would kind of indicate that there could well be an after speaking to James Telestrian. So, that at least is encouraging. James Telestrian III. Go on then, let's get this over with. As you approach, James Telestrian III looks up from the computer screen built into the surface of his desk and assesses you. Calculated and cold, a practiced smile comes to his face. He vibes the kind of rich you don't get from Trivid. It's not the clothing or the trappings or the bow before your bed as mentioned. It's something else, the feeling that you're being categorized as a resource or a liability or a pawn. James Telestrian III. I have been reviewing the results of your visit to my Seattle office last night. I admit they are impressive. You've generated a considerable amount of damage to my office complex, killed or wounded many of my security personnel, and cost my vice president of security his jobs. In 24 hours you've accumulated quite a bill with me, sir. How do you intend to settle your debt? You have already confiscated the container I took. I have no other bargaining chips. First, some instruction. You do not begin a negotiation by admitting that you have nothing with which to negotiate. However, you were considering your tactical situation. This tells me you are more than a mere street thug. Allow me to instruct you further. You have one piece of information which you might use as a bargaining chip in the little time you have left to live. Why you took what you took. I am interested to know why you and your team of criminals fought your way through my security teams up to my private office to access the matrix and uncover the location of a simple research project. It goes like this. Um... I took the Aegis sample to kill giant insect spirits or that. That one. I find your business somehow refreshing. He touched the button on his death. Mr. Quaff, please ask my daughter to join us. The young pretty elf has dark circles under her eyes and a haunted expression on her face. She recognises you instantly. It's you. You're the man who helped me escape from the Universal Brotherhood. How did you get here? Celestrian cuts in quickly. Thank you, Marie-Louise. You confirm the identity of your rescuer and give me reason to forgive him for his trespasses against me. 
He looks hungry for your help. I'm glad you're here. You did well back there. Without you, we'd all be dead. Closes her eyes. Thank you, but I'm not sure that death wouldn't be better than this. I can't sleep at all. I'm afraid that this is a dream that I will wake up and still be there with the bugs. You can relax, Marie Louise. You are safe. It is over. No, it won't be over until they're all dead. She shudders. You didn't see them. You don't understand. You and those men you flew in here. All you do is talk. It's just like you to form a committee, father. I knew that someone had to take action. That's why I got Hakim involved. The already cold exterior of James Celestrian III turns to ice. I see. It was you and your crippled little friend who leaked ages to this man. We will speak a bit later. In private. Now then, Silmar. There are people I wish you to meet. The committee my daughter alluded to. It is a rare opportunity for a man of the street such as yourself. I urge you to behave. We will adjourn to the library. I would be delighted. I don't know if that's sarcasm or not. Just behave. <laughs> There is a weight in Telestrian's library, a sense of magnitude and of purpose. You are no longer in the presence of mere wealth, you are in the presence of history. Oh dear, is that Harlequin? <laughs> James Rastin III, ladies and gentlemen, this is Silman. He's the human who saved my daughter and the only one who has faced our common enemy in combat. Herr Brachus, what does the representative of the great dragon Lothware have to tell us about the magical insect this... Shadow Runner uncovered. Brackus speaks slowly with deep, melodious German accent. He takes his time, accentuation each word, relishing each vowel and each consonant, tasting them as they were they were a de delicacy. My Lord Lothwear has witnessed the insect spirit's physical manifestation before, roughly 9,000 years ago. As you are aware, magic ebbs and flows from the earth, cycling from peak to peak over the course of 5,200 years. As the level of magic grows, Hands, dear. It is Harlequin. I love you, but you could babble on forever, and I believe time is of the essence. The painted elf addresses you. Silmar, is it? Delighted. The bug you fought was not merely a magically awakened animal like a wyvern or hydra or anything else in the sixth world. In fact, it isn't from this world at all. It's the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. I imagine that moving from one place to plane of existence to another isn't easy. Correct. Perhaps this German can tell you all about it at length someday. He got plenty of time to chit at. Now an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through astral space and show up on Earth late for dinner. Dinner in this case being us. Algeron. Two elements are required to bring one across the void, a shaman and a host. First the spirit calls upon a shaman, often in dreams. The spirit seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accepts the spirit as his totem. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. The best candidates are disaffected and disenfranchised, and short the weak will. Their minds are the most susceptible suggestion, which is helpful in making the transformation. As you may imagine, there are these are the sort of people easily attracted to a cult, such as the Universal Brotherhood. Finally, by performing what has to be truly discussed in ritual, the shaman serving the insect to totem implants the spirit into the host, willingly or not, then it's feeding time. Harlequin is correct. The insect spirit will then slowly consume its host while transforming it into the spirit's own insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plane. I don't like the sound of this. You shouldn't. It's bad. Really, really bad. The initial bugs prepare a nest for the summoning of a queen. Once a nest has its queen, she literally explodes with newly manifested insect spirits. They swarm out of the nest, feasting on all the flesh they can find and implanting more insect spirits into fresh corpses, again and again and again. The room falls silent as they all consider the scenario. Face is grim. Telestrian breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, Silmar. It's an invasion. Hands. My Lord Loughry knew this day would come, but he did not know precisely when nor where. The rescue of Mr. Telestrian's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in this cycle of the world. Then why don't you just fire a cruise missile at the Brotherhood and call it a day? Or, so you're early to the party this time, that gives you the upper hand, right? Yeah, we'll go with that one. We're not early, we merely have experience on our side. The insect spirit is only resident in the transformed host's body. Conventional weapons could hurt the body and expose the spirit, but the spirit itself cannot be destroyed by mundane means, hence Project Aegis. Air Telestrian's Biotechnology and Agricultural Division worked with my Lord Lothwee's Falmatog. 
Thaumaturgical engineers and design project agents to destroy an insect spirit once it's released from its host. The formula, a fluorescent astral bacteria stain, exists in the physical and astral plane at once and can thus affect the insect spirit. Now that was a mouthful. Did you memorize it or are you reading this off of index cards? <laughs> My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how Project Aegis will be used in the field. Dr. Ravenwood. Diane Ravenwood. Our weapon specialists have rapidly prototyped the delivery service for the fluorescent astral bacterial strain. They've created some prototype launchers which fire Aegis field shells. When fired, the shields will discharge a high velocity stream of the bacteria. In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must first be damaged using conventional weapons or magic until the spirit is released from the host body. Then the insect spirit must be shot with the Project Aegis prototype launcher to destroy it. So in order to stop an invasion of insect spirits from another dimension, the Dragon and Elf co-created their magical insecticide. We'll go with that. Crudely put, but accurate. We must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning their queen, and we must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside their facility, and the only one who has personally fought these creatures before. That, along with your highly effective assault upon my property, indicates that you are the ideal person to lead the attack. What makes you think Project Aegis will actually work? He grins and his red lipstick catches the light. Because it has to. Come on, kid. When fate taps you on the shoulder, you're going to pay attention. Unfortunately, it's the nasty habit of tapping you on the opposite shoulder so that when you turn around, she's on the other side, giggling like a deranged schoolgirl. I hate that. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission? You had me at killing bugs. Show me how to use Aegis and I'll get it done. Excellent. He claps his hand as seeing the insects for the first time. I love the way that the shortlifter are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. Rackus raises his hands and Harlequin stops clapping. Harlequin's clapping instantly stops. There is one final note, a warning if you will. You've seen the danger the insects represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. The shaman must tap into a powerful source of magic in order to summon the queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Aware of the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. Hey, don't scare the kid. Hansel will still... Hansel, we still need him to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, Silmar. I wouldn't mind seeing these creatures for myself. I missed them last time. Lestrian will bankroll you so you can hire the rest of the team. Find me when you're ready to go and we'll bug right out of here. Besides, yes, yeah, speak with Father Queen when you're ready to depart. If you wish to require additional supplies for your mission, find my assistant, Quaff. He's highly resourceful. Wow. Okay, I think it's appropriate at this point to say. Right. I'm getting the feeling that this is our last, last bit. So, decking, we're probably good with... And we certainly don't have the karma. I think it's going to be quickness. Right. Aldron. I provide spells, spirit, folk, or fetishes to help you on this crucial quest? A question first. Speak it. Were you spying on me at the seamstress's union? His eyes widened the question. You mistake your importance, Silma. No, I was not spying on you until Mr. Telestrian summons. You were beneath my notice. I saw only a customer. Now, do you require my magic? Who are you? I'm a peddler of magical spells, spirits, and foci. Nothing more. Truly? No. <laughs> do you require my magic? Are you really here? Aldrin's face takes on a dreamy expression. Are any of us? Yes, Silma, I am here, and at the seamstress union, and a myriad of other places. On to the work at hand. Do you require my magic? Let's see what you're selling. Right, there's some good stuff here, but we are not a mage. So I can't use any of that. What does Brachus has to say? How did the insects... Okay, we did not allow many opportunities... We did not allow many opportunities during our briefing for you to ask questions, Shadowrunner. You may ask them now. How did the insect spirits get here? When a membrane between planes fins, the insect spirits reach into the mind of a shaman and begin their manipulation, playing on weaknesses and offering unlimited power if the rituals needed to bring the spirits here are performed. But once a shaman takes on an insect spirit as a totem, they begin an inevitable decline into insanity, slowly losing their humanity. Lothra had seen this before and knew 
another was coming, why didn't he move faster? Based upon the previous cycle of magic, the first insects are not due to appear for another 700 years. My Lord Lothware believed he was well ahead of schedule. Something is different this time. It is concerning. Why do you think it's different this time? Perhaps it's due to the population of humans and metahumans on Earth being so much higher than in previous ages. As a result, the volume of magic created by sentient beings is correspondingly higher. Or perhaps it is the density of the population coupled with the advances of science, society and technology that has altered things. Magic has never returned to a world like this one before. The density of sentient creatures coupled with the density of information coupled with a new concept, the technological persistence of memory, heightens a society's existential angst, thus more people realise how truly horrible existence is, simultaneously. Then in it, that in itself may be a form of magic. Off we're studying the question now. Wow, okay. What's it like to serve a great dragon? The German man's eyes narrow. Do not misconstrue my relationship with Lord Lothware. I do not serve. Oh, that's interesting. Um, where do the insect spirits come from? As the level of magic in the sixth world grows, the, for lack of a better word, the distance between the various planes of reality decreases. When the membrane between the planes is thin enough, ritual magic may be used to draw beings from one to another. Right. Let's have a word with this. Oh. Okay, so saying I can clarify for you? Yeah, tell me more about Project Ages. Industry Industries Corporation has been working on Project Ages for two years without fully understanding its use. Lothwood did not trust me with this information. My engineers finally met the Dragon specification three months ago and had just begun the production process when my cousin Lynn hired Shadowrunners to destroy the lab and the factory, leaving us only the sample you stole. Why was Mary Louise taken by the Universal Brotherhood? He pauses before answering. The host for the Queen is chosen very carefully as the interactions between Queen and the lead shaman are critical. A family connection between the two roles is ideal. As you have discovered, my father's indiscretion with Melinda Watts. You know that Jessica Watts, the shaman, and Marie Louise are related by blood. I would appreciate that that information remained in the shadows. How do I use Aegis? Uh, people have weaponized Project Aegis for normally by creating shells which when fire propel a high velocity cloud of the material which should be effective with killing exposed insect spirits. There are more effective ways to deliver Aegis, obviously, but time was of the essence and I needed to improvise. Okay. So where's this guy who can help me with stuff? Right. Marie Louise. I was listening. It sounds bad. Yep. Thank you for everything. It'll be fine. I believe you. You look like you have a question. Why were you locked up at the Universal Brotherhood? Tava didn't approve of my boyfriend and tried to scare him off. Something went wrong and Hakim ended up in a wheelchair. Father covered the whole thing up and lied to me about Hakim. He told me horrible things. And I believed him. My aunt Lynn told me the truth about Hakim and how my father lied. He preyed upon my anger. I was so disgusted with him. It was easy for her to get me to leave and join her new family at the Universal Brotherhood. Was it Hakim who helped you in the Matrix? He smiles in love. Yes, even after my father ruined his life and convinced me to hate him, he's still been watching over me. My angel in cyberspace, Baron Samadhi. After we escaped, I told Hakim about the Brotherhood and about the bugs. It was his idea to steal Bridget Aegis so we, you could go back into Universal Brotherhood and exterminate the bugs. But I don't know how he knew about it. Baron Samadhi just knows things. So what did Lynn Telestrian and the Universal Brotherhood want with you? We know that, but do you? Aunt Lynn was very excited to have me there, almost manic. She talked about the Inner Circle and how I was going to be at its centre. She said I would be their queen. The way she spoke, it was as if she'd seen God or something. But it's not God she sees, it's bugs, only bug. So what did Hakim tell you about us breaking into your father's office? Nothing, I haven't spoken to him since last night. Why, what happened? He hasn't contacted you? No, and I thought he would by now. Did something happen to him? I'm sure he was in... Okay. I'm not going to lie to her. Last I heard from him he'd been made, they were coming for him. Look far across his face. They, you mean my father's people. That's right. I, I'm sure he's okay. They probably just took away his deck. Father wouldn't. No, he's okay. Okay. In addition to the Aegis loaded launchers, we will provide them all for us to out for you with anything for weapons and supplies to clove in. Right, show me the gear.
I've got an Aries Alpha. Right, is there a better assault rifle than the Aries Alpha? No, there isn't. There are weapons that do more damage. Drones. So I've got that one. Or I can take Wolfhound, the best support drone in the business. He will drop a grenade, medkit, and even fight. Or I can go with that and consumables. Right. So we're going to want, I think. Expert drone repair kits, premium med kits. In terms of grenades, we are going lethal. So we'll take those high explosive grenades. Weapons wise, we can't do better. But we can do better on our drone. Let's go with that one because it sounds like it's got versatility. Okay. Right, so let's get premium med kit. Premium med kit. And premium med kit. Now the problem with that is we've got none of our nice grenades. So actually we're going to remove one of the Ned kits. And we're going to take a terrible chance here and remove that. Now I want a couple of high explosive grenades. Okay, and let's put a wolf hand in. Okay, show me the outfits. So we've got a pretty good one that gives us drone control plus one and drone combat plus one. So I'm going to stick with that. Now I can sell some items as well. So as I'm probably going to have to buy. Um, some shadow runners. Let's up our monies a bit. Okay. Oh, can we talk to him? What's he got to say? You're going to die, asshole? Maybe, but I'm going to live first. You'll still die screaming. <laughs> yeah. You. I'm not a fan of. Right, you don't want to talk anymore.
Are you ready to get knee deep in ectoplasm? I have a few questions first. Of course you do. So who are you? I am he as you are, he as you are me, and we are all together. You're the walrus? Cuckoo job. He bows with flourish. I'm Harlequin the Lightbearer, last knight of the Crying Spire. He who manipulates shadow runners and fights jewels with arseholes, and for the next hour or two I'm at your service. Um, what's the connection between the bugs and the Universal Brotherhood? Oh, this one is genius, genius. Talk about hiding in plain sight. The cycle, the bugs didn't use some whacked out shaman in the small rural village as their portal. They're thinking big. They've set up shop in every major city, created a major marketing campaign, and then began aggressively recruiting the dropouts, the disaffected and deranged. Just like any good cult. If ages fails, if we fail, the world would be absolutely overrun by bugs. It's brilliant. Wonderful. Does Hambrakus really work for a great dragon? He winks. No. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to go back. I'm going to save. So we've had a lot of background there. Um, and we are going to bring this to a close because I suspect things are going to get very tick next time. Um, but thank you very much for watching. I'm Selma UK, and if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Um, consider subscribing to the channel, as that will notify you of other videos. I do have other Let's Play video series, so please take a look. And please consider leaving a comment. And tell me, for example, have you played any Shadowrun before? And what about the two follow-on games? What do you think of those? Um, now, you can find me at Selma UK on various social media, on my website, on my Discord, and you can also find me at Selma UK on Twitch, where I live stream four times a week. But for now, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and stay safe.